just, this is a little bit of an addition on the start of the video because we forgot to actually say the most important thing about today. Happy Easter, everybody. Don't eat all the bloody eggs, kids. No. Behave. But yeah, we just wanted to say I hope you are having a lovely Easter. Obviously, it's a little bit different to what we can normally do, but I hope you enjoy your day. Remember what today is if you're religious and if not, enjoy enjoy all your chocolate and all your family time and your dinner with your family. Love you lots and enjoy the video. So, see you in a bit. Hey, Mo, we need to get an intro down for this channel, you know. Yeah, but what are you thinking, Lee? Why don't I wrap over the top of it? Don't be ridiculous. You sound like a northern m and Look, listen to me. Yo, yo, yo. The munch brunch in the hoose, man. Absolutely not. Right, what you got in mind? Let's just keep it simple. I'm Lee. I'm Aim. They wear the munch brunch. Welcome back to another mukbang with Aim and Lee. We are the Munch Bunch UK. Lee, tell them what we have on the menu today. Hey, Mo. It's been a while. <coughs> Bloody popping on stuck in my throat. We have King Po chicken, rice. Isn't it Kung Po? I don't know. I don't know if it's even Chinese or Indian. What is it? It said Kung Po on the thing. Sure you know what this is. Kung Po chicken, you told me earlier on. Yeah, you picked it up. Oh, well. It's anyway, Kung Po chicken, that's whatever what that we is. Got. I've got egg noodles in mine and a bit of rice leaf. Oh, it's got I've the got the same. But we've got poppadoms, which are brown cooks. I thought it made it look like there was more. Um, and I don't know if it's Chinese or Indian, but we'll have poppadoms regardless because I like poppadoms. Oh, there you go. I just asked you that. Dippy. Anyways, how are you all? It's been like a week since we last recorded. It's been a busy week. Well, mm. not really. <laughs> a bit busy. Um, how have you been in the last week? So I've been, you asked me how I was yeah, doing this week, I've been absolutely fine. I you, mean, you're getting of, a bit I'm like excited now for the end of lockdown, like official end of lockdown. Um, I don't know, because I'm a bit scared of out there, to be yeah. honest. What's out there? I know what you mean. Um, everyone's been going nuts. Have you been going nuts? Like, everyone's been going down the beach, in the parks. I don't mind that. I agree, you should be able to go down the park in groups of six, but they've been going around like 6,000. What I don't appreciate, and I would hate to be like a recycling person, you know, like the, for the council. Oh, no, man. There's state people are leaving these places in. Put the damn rubbish in the bin. Oh, my God. Like, what is the problem with that? Even if that's you, then you've been told because it's just disgusting. Imagine inviting your mates around to your house and, like, they just leave all the crap in your garden. You yeah, wouldn't accept it. That and to think there's loads of people actually leaving the rubbish everywhere. It's like, come all on, over the shop. Um, Cardiff Bay. I've never been to. I've been to Cardiff tri bus station, I think. But at Cardiff Bay, which really looks really nice. I seen a clip today. Everyone's going mental down there in Cardiff, and leaving it in the right state. It, it just groups six away. You can have like two households together mm. that, if that. Yeah, but accumulate some more receipts. But you just need to put the rubbish in the bin, even if there isn't. If the bins are full, just like a carrier bag. Put your rubbish in the <coughs> carrier bag and then put it in the bin on the way home. It's got a bit of heat to that, hasn't it? I would expect it. I would just be mm. sweet and sour. Not uh, right. I don't think so, too. It's not a nice heat, that yeah. is. I'm thinking now, some of these families who say, yeah, we're, we are a group of, a family of like X amount. I think they're lying about how many are in their family, you know, because either there's some, we should be more of these documentaries, like 22 Kids and Cat, because some of these families that are meeting up, they seem to have like 30 or 40 people in a family. Who are coming around? It's two households. We've got thirty people in our household. They're big bloody houses, then, ain't they? Because some of these groups you see all over the news and on like uh, Instagram stuff, they're having some big bloody parties yeah, in the back say garden. You've got six in one household and then seven in another. You can come together like that. But the bigger parties gone and they're not home. <laughs> they're like groups of thirty to forty people. You just wait till the seventeenth of May. It must be good though, like I feel a sense of achievement because we've stuck to the rules. If you have stuck to the rules and like you've said, no, you can't come around my house, dirty Barry from down the road, swing his parties are off until Boris lifts the, the rules. People have stuck to the rules like we have. Um, up until we was allowed people around, when when we was allowed around, Quentin Donnie used to come around and then he said no one's allowed around so no one's been around since, apart from Ryan's dad and um, my dad at Christmas or whenever it was, because like he wasn't very well. And that's it. So if you have stuck to the rules, I bet you're dead excited about I mean, being able to do what you want. 
you got to do what you got to do for yourself within reason. You know, safety barriers and stuff like that. But what makes it like crazy is so much nice weather at the minute. Mm. People tend to like be like, oh, it's sunny. Which you can understand, can't you, like, to a degree, because what everybody does in nice weather is go out and barbecue. Yeah, and the other thing that's happened uh, in the last week or two, it's a real shame for the family and friends, but well, Oggy died. Who? Oggy. How can you not know who Oggy is? I don't know. I don't know who Oggy is either, but they're from our town. Because I went past uh, the other day at a funeral, uh, past the crematorium, and there's, you know, they have the big flower arrangements in the back of their funeral cars. Mm. He said Hoggy, and Hoggy had died. And I was like, Hoggy must have been really popular because they, I'm guessing it's a bloke, because like a bloke's nickname Hoggy, had like five funeral cars. And I was like, I bet I won't even have a bloody Ford Fiesta when I die, full of people. Or I want to like, like a little. I'm researching. Oh, yeah, I'm going to find out who Hoggy is. I don't think they're famous, just popular. So they had like five funeral cars. They had the horses, you know, like they have the black horses for funerals. A lot of people have them these days. He was a major, major, major Wolverhampton Wanderers fan. Like all the, it was all over the place. All right. You can actually research it yeah. in the, the newspaper. All right. Well, he seemed really popular. There was a lot of people turning out for the funeral. Um, I paid my respects by taking my hat off, as you do when you walk past a funeral going on, and bowed my head and told the dog not to bark and be a prat. But I reckon when it's my funeral time, you know that little car in Owen Fields and Horses, Del Boy's car? I reckon I'll be lucky to have them turn up full of people. Mm. Yeah, that's a shame, that is. I think, again, funerals, weddings, everything. Nothing's the same, is it, at the minute, obviously. And it's just, a, it's awful for everybody who wanted to participate different things this year. I mean, there was the first wedding as well the other day that they had. Since things, it was only a group of six people. All right. But I saw it on like the Midlands News. The, the African lady, was it? Not African lady. Um, the lady in bloke who got married who met online. Yeah, that was it. And basically, she was like, I was so scared the day before that things were just going to get cancelled again. And I think that's with a lot of people, like such as this year. Apparently, we're going to get the go ahead to basically have everything out and. Just not so on, abroad. so forth. Yeah, but you can have unlimited people at your wedding. Tell me, are you guys sort of listening to that? Are you taking that for gospel? And are you going to book your wedding for like August time? For With... what? Going abroad? Who's mentioned going abroad? It was not holidays. Oh, no. wedding. Sorry, my bad. Anyway, so as I was saying, sorry. Are you going to like book your wedding in the thought of? Everything can be back open in June, where it's unlimited guests and everything. If you've got any sense, you'd actually book it whilst it's not unlimited, and then you'd have to invite all the annoying people you don't really want to invite. Because when we got married, we had a lot of people that we didn't want there. Mm -mm. Um, so if you do it whilst there's rules and restrictions in place, you could probably save a fair bit on your um, on the cost of food. Mm. But the thing is... That's the scary thing at the moment, isn't it? Like booking, booking a party or booking a wedding or anything like that, and then thinking, I don't want none of my right. right. But thinking, oh, you know, is it going to go ahead? Oh, it. But that would be majorly scary in my opinion. I just want to book anything. I'll put it off till next year. My mum turned sixty. Was it sixty? Last year, for a sixtieth birthday, a partner Bob, sideshow Bob. Um, he wanted to do a, a big party, a big surprise birthday party. And he we still has. Go, yeah, has bought at the time. He wanted it for a 60th. And like the day before, or the week before it was meant to happen, like the first major lockdown went into mm. place. And there's, he's still got everything in place. Like still got the deposit paid and everything like that. But he's had to wait now. She had a, another birthday since then. Yeah. So it'd be like two birthdays removed, but probably by the time he actually gets it done. She was like 62. When he wanted it for a 60th. That's awful. Mm -hmm. Everything's paid for though, isn't it? Yeah. i tell you what. Before we come along. I don't like watching this. My mum don't watch our stuff. Does anybody not YouTubers? Have I got anything here? Just a chin. I saw it. No, you got no souls or anything. Aim was watching Scream 3 um, as we was getting ready to do this. Yeah. I was watching 
What trash did we watch when we were younger? I actually said it to say this is way too cheesy. <laughs> but I loved the first Scream. Mm. I, I, we was like 15, 14, 15 when it came out. I was in high school. Mm. And the first one was great. The second two were crap. Well, the, the last couple as well. I didn't mind them. But it makes you look back, doesn't it? I know How old better films have come along. Mm. Big time. Like, I love Scream. But I'll tell you one film I could never get my head around. It was The Blair Witch Project. That was meant to be scary as hell, and I went to the cinema thinking, I'm hardcore watching this. But record making that would have been scary, because they actually went into the woods, the people did. And there was just Nothing happened, they just was running out. Oh, right, if you was told to go into the woods with a camcorder, they weren't told they weren't being filmed at the time. They said, look, take a video recorder, and at the end of every night, leave it in a box with the, with the tapes, and in the morning you'll have new tapes in the box, and... That's it. That's all they were told, the people who was in that film. And the director and his, like the producers and whatnot, would go through the night, scaring the shit out of these people, tapping on the tent, making noises in the woods. Making and I don't believe that was real. I think it was all planned out. Well, oh, the people didn't know about it. They wanted the genuine reactions. And that's why the people reacted the way they did. Because hmm. they were scared stiff. You'd have thought they'd have took a box of tissues. You do realise that's not in that film. That is in a scary movie. No, it was just an exaggeration of what happened in the original. Her nose was running a little bit. Oh, bloody hell, mine runs every day. Runs a marathon, mine now. Oh, my God. But the point is... I don't know what it was just what he's saying. The video cut off. I just think that the, it wasn't scary in the slightest. Not compared to things like Insidious or things like that. No, I don't like any of that anymore. You was watching Annabelle the other day. I was like, what the hell is this? It's just a sodding doll. How's that scary? Hang on, you scared of Chucky? Chucky was bloody scary. There's a doll that come alive and chased you around the freaking house. Annabelle just sits there chat. Big grin on her face. She mm -hmm. wouldn't do anything. Wouldn't you be a little bit scared? You wouldn't. Well, my mum has them dolls in her bloody front room. And we I don't have like to hide them, don't we? She's got them porcelain dolls. And I don't know what the hell she's... My mum's a bit odd. One like, in a pram in the living room? Yeah, a little pram with a porcelain doll in it. Oh, and a bloody oh, rocking really horse, all this stuff. The rocking horse is... Yeah, but Deputy. at her age, there's no need. So, she bought this porcelain doll, or Bob bought her it. And it's in the pram. We me and Anne stay there on our own. We turn it around, or we throw something over the top of it. <laughs> Usually a little like, tea towel or a blanket or something. No, no, it's scary, isn't it? Well, we've come down the night and seen it looking at you. And it's one of them ones that it looks like it's sort of constantly staring at you. You know, when you and your mum, you ever been in the car and like, you know, when you go past like a billboard or what they call them, like the advertisements on the road. I don't know, it's like Tom Hanks in the new film, but he looks like he's looking right at you. That is exactly what this doll looks like. Mm. It's like, and I'm like, oh God. Well, you can't look away. It's going to get us. Yeah, you know, if you look at it, it's going to look like it's looking at it, isn't it? Yeah, but that's what I mean. It really freaks me out. I felt really bad yesterday. I told Anne about it. She said, right, go at me. I started to work for the establishment. Now, I pride myself on being a bit of a bugger and breaking the rules and encouraging other people to break the rules mm -hmm. too. What are you on about breaking the rules? I love to break rules, Anne. I hate being told what to do. But even if you tell me to, I get angry about it. And I was in Lidl yesterday and I grasped on a woman who was nicking some cashew nuts. No, I said there could have been something other other reasons i just don't know so i set the scene i'm in Lidl. there's a lady in front of me eating cashew nuts i don't think anything of it i said i put them in her handbag security guy comes along he's in she's in the queue in front of me excuse me love where's i didn't say love we're not around the other down where's the cashew nuts i was like oh why and then she's like i've not got them i've not got them i've put them back on an aisle back there it's like, i don't believe you basically we couldn't see him in the trolley and then we carry on he carries on talking about another two minutes as the queue's moving down he said, show me your bag. So she opens up one bag. Like she took a bag for life, uh, empty. Open up another bag, empty. And she didn't open her own bag. And I thought, yeah, I know what you're up to, you love. I shouldn't have said anything. He's walking away. And I said, handbag. But I had my yeah. mask on. And he didn't hear me. He said, you what, mate? I said, check her handbag. He's, where? Handbag. And she heard me then, I think. And she sort of looked around. And she's like, well, he's opened up a coat. Luckily, she had some clothes on. Try to Terry the Flasher, and she opened up a coach. Look, nothing here, nothing here. It's like doing a sort of jig. 
And then God. the man, she said to the man, she put him on an aisle. She said, "Take me to them." And obviously, she wasn't going to find him because he's in her handbag. And next thing I knew, she's been escorted out the building. So I felt bad until I realised she hadn't been charged. If she charged her one pound fifty for the casinos or uh, called the police, I'd have felt really bad about it. Danny, if you're watching, that was you. <laughs> Listen, you got to give him a bit of a backstory here, Lee. Like. What's that? What kind of backstory? The backstory is the reason why, for one, I said. Go on. You know, I was worried she was hungry and she didn't have no money. But she was eating her in the shop. Of all the things to do, you don't eat your stolen goods in I the shop. I am that type of person, I worry, even if I know it's like wrong. I was just thinking, maybe she's got nothing to eat and maybe she was so hungry. But then would you choose cashews to, to snack on? I, I don't know. That's why I don't think she'd nicked them at first until the security guard came on because she was just there sticking her hand in the bag. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As you do with notes, like really chewing down on him. <laughs> I'm sorry, I've never heard anybody go. Nah, nah, nah. She did. She put the cushion. She put a nut in her mouth. I thought it was just seeds or something. I didn't realise it was cushion nuts at the time. Nah, 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 nah. I like, really chewed on these things, and then she was like discreetly threw a coat over the bag, and because I was behind the lady and her son, I could see her put the bag of cushion nuts in a handbag. I thought, yeah, you've been a bit sly here, ain't you? Love? But I was like, it's all right. If you get away with it, that's fine. If the security guard hadn't come along and started questioning her, I'd probably wouldn't have said anything. <laughs> but he don't like me, the security guard down. And I thought, I'll get him back in his good books. And I'm not his bad books, so he just doesn't like me, I can tell. And that was a big piece of chilli. He never came back and thanked me, though. I was looking at what? Thank me. I just saved you pound, two pound on some cashew nuts. No, let me tell you a bit of trivia. They won't do anything anyway. It's about cashew nuts. Cashew nuts. I say cashews. <laughs> you say cashew. I say cashew nuts. Is that? I'm not sure how it's pronounced, but if you work in a cashew nut factory, let us know how it's said. Yeah, you say mm, cashew nuts. I say cashew nuts. Mm. Like cashews. You say cashews. We probably say it way too many times now. I don't know. Tell me, what? are you a Lee's way of saying cash? Oh, the spat out. Cashews, or are you a cashew? Yeah, which one is it, guys? Also, Probably both, one we've had a debate about for many a year, and we've always asked random people, or oh, we've been in taxis and we asked taxi drivers <coughs> their opinion. No. We have done that, and we've been in taxis and had this debate. Is it tortoise or tortoise? Now, I say tortoise, Anne says tortoise, and we've had this argument for a lot of years. And we've had a lot I of think, people say it each I way. I think you're right, um... I think the way the spouse to say it's tortoise. A lot of people do say tortoise. But I know that. I don't know why they would say tortoise then. Mm -hmm. But I've heard of that. So I've always said it. You know? I kind of know, yeah. No. Oh. This is really tasty, guys. Mm. Charwoods, this is. This is uh, Kung Pao. Kung Pao? Kung Pao? Sauce. Really good. It's not like mega spicy. No. It's nice and like a sweet chilli, that's why. But it's enough. Oh. It's you a nice little kick. Yeah, it is a nice little kick. When you first put it in, you're like, ooh, that's a bit warm. But then it's yeah, nice. Like, I was listening to some music today and I, was, I realised, in memory I realised rather, about how old we actually are. So it's a, a CD I used to listen to. I don't really listen to a CD, I had it on Spotify by a band I listened to. And I was like, on Spotify, it'll tell you the year it was released. I was like, okay, when was this released? 1998. So, right, so I was 13. I thought, shit, a brick. That was like 23 years ago? 22 Damn. years ago? That's insane. And I still remember all the words, all the songs. I was like, I listened to it yesterday. Can I just say as well, though, I'm really impressed with the amount you gave me today. It wasn't a lot. Right. And it was it's just perfect. But it explains why I'm still eating half my god way more than you. It's great. Do you guys get like that? Like it was like you think, oh my god, that's quite overwhelming. Like when Lee goes to a carvery, Lee goes to a carvery, trust me. But it's like when I made you a Sunday dinner last weekend. We didn't do a mukbang for it. We were just having a oh weekend off. 
Because Anne likes her veg, which I completely disagree with. I don't see the point in veg. That's not stupid. Sorry, it's no. not, because when you then put your nice stuff on there, like roast potatoes, Yorkshire puddings, maybe a couple of boiled potatoes, it looks like it's piled up. You need a, a, like a king-size plate. That's why we, don't, we go to Carvery, I get Amers, because she never fetches her own. And, do you? So Aim's whinging about something I just said, so I've had to edit it out. And basically, um, Carvery's, yeah. So, by the time you put all your stuff on there, your browse, your Yorkshire's, your boiled croquet potatoes, which I like, and they never do them at Carvery's, there's no room for veg. No, they don't, actually. That's strange. Well, they, they try to scrimp on the price, don't they, at Carvery's? Mm. I reckon if we went to a posh carvery, they'd do like roast lamb. Like, no, like roast duck and uh, ro pigeon. There's what oh. some Master Chef they would only have pigeon on there. I couldn't eat. I couldn't eat a pigeon. No, it's not because I'm against meat eating or anything, because I'm not. But it's just the whole idea of it. I'm psychologically like affected by certain things. Well, I'm not sure why that's classed as posh pigeon because. I guarantee you, it's harder for me to go out and catch a chicken than it would be to catch a pigeon. There's pigeons all around here. We found a pigeon in our buddy bedroom the one time, <coughs> falling down the chimney. I could have done a roast pigeon oh for God. three. So, guys, we have this, like, you know, we you have your chimney breast in the, the, your living room, let's say. Well, directly above, we have the same thing in my bedroom. It's quite big. A full fireplace. This one's got wood in it, the bottom. You know, like the. What's called our decorative wood. Upstairs, it's blocked in. So, we hear this. Ooh, 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 ooh. You know, like pigeons do. Leaves like there's something in that chimney. I was like, don't be silly. There's not, don't be daft. Surely not. Hear it again. Next thing you know, we found the pigeon, didn't we? No, well, about a week later. Yeah. It was a little bit on the dead side, but. I feel really guilty about it. If I knew how expensive pigeon was, we probably could have sold that on. Uh, uh, it, they call it, is it game? Yeah, that's it. Like pigeon, grouse, um, anything like that. Mm. I couldn't do it. I couldn't eat it. But it's classed as a better meat. It's like a chicken, delicacy, yeah. But I don't understand how, except because chickens are harder to catch. If you ever watch Rocky, you'll know what I'm on about. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Physically, they're probably harder to catch, but I think they're more kind of delicacy type food. To me, I, I, you know, especially when there's like blood on it. I mean, don't get me wrong, I eat rare steak. I love it with like, sounds gross, yeah, but I do like it rare, but that way. And I, I had to sign a thing. You've had to didn't sign I? a certificate or something at one time. Was it Miller and Carter or something like that? Anyway, to agree like, that you don't mind I dying. Want a I wanted a blue steak. And I signed it anyway. So nice. But I couldn't eat pigeon. Do you like rare steak or rare lamb? And what's this thing about now? Where now you're allowed to have pork a little bit on the pink side. Like on MasterChef now, they are saying like you can have it. It's at your own, you know, detriment, I guess. But you, they say, oh yeah, a little bit. You can have it a little bit pink, a little bit. I'm like, I was always taught that chicken and pork, like the white meat, you had to have it. Cooked all the way through, but however, well, if you do it on the Master Chef, you're taking a chance with the buddy, um, the judges, really, aren't you? Some of you going to eat it, and they know, possibly... they know what, when it's right and when it's wrong, to be honest. But I just think, like, it's a bit crazy that, like, I was always taught that pork you outside it cooked definitely, you know, reheated, all that business. But now they're saying that you can eat it a bit pink, but I could still. Perhaps try that because it's a meat that I'm used to. And I think when we, when we went to Spain, we had veal, didn't we? Yeah, that, was I was even, that was lovely. That was. I was even a little bit sort of sketchy. I was eating like, oh no, like, you know. That was really good. But it, well, it was nice. I think, again, with a lot of food, it's more psychological. So yeah, That's why I want to eat um, a lot of food. Like, I Onions. like mushrooms. I actually like them. But the actual, f the fact of what it is, it scares me. Oh, it's fungus that grows in the woods. I heard about some mushrooms today. And must be really posh ones. Because it's like, they sound expensive. It begins with M. And basically, when you cook them up, they're like meat. I'm not sure which ones they are, though. 
A lot of them, they so taste like beef, don't they? No, these like actually come out like a meat if you could saute them off and stuff like that. Have we got any cooks on here? Any chefs? Anyone who works in kitchens? I don't Shall mean I have a look? in your hat. What, have we got any cooks on our channel? No. I don't know. What, what types of mushrooms you got? Like shiitake, you got enoki mushrooms. Oh, I, I do I actually know. want to try those. Uh, yeah, if we've got any cooks, though, and postmen, I don't know why, but give us a shout out if you're a pa all women, posties, that's what you call them these days, isn't it? What on earth is posties and chefs and cooks? What's that giving out uh, different oh, jobs? Oh, there's portobello mushrooms. No. it would be with M, whatever it was. I know that portobello mushroom they use, and it's like. Oh. Let's have a little look, shall we? Oops, sorry. Okay. Um, Has anyone been sunbathing this week? Or um, getting their garden sorted? That's what Oyster mushrooms. To. King oyster? No, it wasn't all too, but the oyster. Chante Chantelle? Might be that, I don't know. Chantrelle. I'm talking Butchie. about something I heard whilst cutting the grass. So, I can't say word for Hedgehog word. Hedgehog mushrooms. They're a bit spiky, aren't they? <laughs> Is anyone else? I was at the other day, I got in the bath. Morel. Morel mushrooms. And apparently okay. they're really meaty. Like that. Yeah, they are, yeah. that's true. They look meaty anyway. I remember that through Mommy Tang. Somebody I watch on YouTube, that is. Do you watch Mommy Tang? I don't. I often fall asleep listening to the bloody woman when I was watching it. Stop tanging. <laughs> yeah, let's not promote other channels like that. I look. Because they're going to promote us to have five or six million people now. It's like four hundred and something thousand, but I love that. That'll do. Bit of that, please. I'll I'll come back tomorrow. What I was about to say, because I'll I'll remember. Because I've got a good. Yeah, memory. you soak them mushrooms first. Yeah. And then they expand. But a lot of people like to use portobello mushrooms. You know the big mushrooms like that. Mm. <coughs> and they put them in their burgers, oh, <coughs> either as a. A compliment of steak or they have that as a meat replacement yeah. because they have like a woody meaty taste to it i guess Something like that. i don't know when i was a kid my uncle um and his partner used to make their own poppadoms and i didn't like indian food and all that stuff i'd probably have like fish fingers and chips or my dad does doesn't he yeah but i'd always eat a, like a poppadom oh this is lovely this with a plate of fish fish fingers and chips Everyone else having an Indian or uh, Chinese, whatever. Lovely jubbly. I love that with your mum when like, we used to come round to yours. Mm. You just sort of have the basics and me and his mum would sort of pick loads of different things. I always have the basics. I'm still the same. You know, right? you so. are nothing like that. Think of how well you've done with different foods. Mm. When would you sit there? I mean, obviously it isn't authentic, it's just a jar. But Kung Pao chicken with egg noodle and chilies. Yeah, this and is water nice. chestnuts. When did you ever? If I said to you when we first met, do you want a water chestnut? Would, yeah. Did you know what there was? No, I would have been, definitely been put off by the idea. If of I chestnuts. said here's a here's a water chestnut, because like you was more of a beans on toast, hot Still dogs am. type guy. If I'd have said to you, I tell you what, have a bamboo shoot and a water chestnut, a chicken curry. Mm -hmm. Well, he would have looked at me like I've lost the plot. If I'd have said in 14 years from now, Lee, you were going to be eating got Kung Pao chicken. I would sweeter. definitely ask what the hell that was. He never ate pizza? No, I didn't. And when well, you do like that. I'm still a fussy boy. Like, if you put a pizza in front of me, if it's got peppers on onions, I won't touch it or mushrooms. But if it's just like cheese and tomato with some meat on there, then I will do. I think it's like pastrami. And now I think it's pastrami mm -hmm. like. Yeah, pastrami's really nice. Anyways, let's wrap this up, Amo. Otherwise, we'll be here oh, all Honestly, night. guys, I'm not kidding you. I'll just say this lastly. Lee has done really well with eating stuff. Like, I'm not kidding you. It was crazy, wasn't it? Like, he used to come back from his work and have, like, hot dog sandwiches. <laughs> like, any on your lunch break or just a yeah. snack. I mean, obviously, people do that. I'm not saying, like, but... Then me and his mum and dad like a chicken curry or something. And they're like, mm, get the hot dogs or sausage roll sandwiches. You and my mum are very much alike. I'm like, you'll sit there. Like, I'm very, we talked about this on a pre recent video it was. Like, you know what you want off the menu. So I'd like, if we're ordering from the Indian, okay, I'll have chicken tikka pieces, not in a sauce, just cooked. What do you do in the wrap? When I, yeah, when I was younger though. 
Oh, when you. Your naan bread poppadoms, chips, and chicken tikka pieces. But listen, Lee had a certain way of doing this. Tell him what you used to do, you built it up. Oh, yeah, you have a proximity do. So it'd be the naan bread, stick some chicken in, stick some chips in, stick some poppadom in, wrap it up. You know, I used to see him, you put the naan bread, then a poppadom, then the stuff, wouldn't you? Yeah. Wrap it up. I really shouldn't be surprised that I put about four stone on since them days. Um, it's quite clear why. No, but that was like the, the, the most kind of Asian meal you'd yeah. eat, wouldn't you? you? That would be your map limit. That would be it. Mm, but then they'd be new today, Amy. Like my mum would say. I'd be like, yeah, go on then, Joe. What should we have? Not then, that spicy bean casserole again. <laughs> no, but like for the takeaway. And then you, I, I, would, I would not risk wasting money on food. I don't think I like from a takeaway. But you two would try a different thing, wouldn't you? Like every couple of weeks or whatever. Yeah. And then some of you like it, yes, some of you don't. But then it's one of them ones. You've been trying to remember what one of your curries was for about 10 years. It's just pure green. It isn't Sagaloo. She it, enjoyed it that much. We can't remember what the hell it was. It was just... My mate, he recommended it. Well, not a mate now, but he recommended it to me. And uh, I loved it. It was just pure garlic. It looked like... It, it was spinach, but the trouble is it wasn't Sagaloo. It had chicken in it, and it was just amazing. I can't even remember. But the point of it is... Now, Lee will eat so many different variations and different types mm -hmm. of food. And it's actually thanks to you guys, because since we've been doing this, yeah. you are more adventurous with it. I am a little bit, I have to admit. I remember one time we went out for an Indian uh, with Aim's friends. My friends as well at the time, but we was, Aim wasn't very well that day, <gasps> and Aim had arranged this meal Okay, the so there time. was my best friend from school, and his wife, and we're still best friends now. <laughs> And then there was my other friend who I met through him. And me and I. And me and, and me and Lee, obviously. And I felt a little bit off. And I thought, okay, so <coughs> I'll go along <coughs> and I'll, I'll try my best. Sitting at the table. So this is me and Lee at the Indian table. Hi, can I take your order? I'm like, um... I'll have a water, please. <clears throat> yeah. At this point, I'm like, oh, no. I'd been at work that day till about seven, uh, working in Birmingham at uh, NatWest, and I got in. I was like, what time have we got to be there? Half eight, rushing round. You sure you want to go, Aim? <laughs> yeah, I want to go. You <clears throat> really was sure? Like, Don't worry, you'll be fine when you get there. Go and have fun. All I remember is we were all sitting round. We ordered the food. We paid for it. We had to come home, didn't we? I think, we, did we bring it out? I don't even no, remember. No, we got a McDonald's. I was like, no, you got a McDonald's. We didn't actually, no, I didn't, we didn't get the food. I said, I can't, I can't. We sat there, we come home. They stayed, and I went, Lee, I'm so ill, I'm so ill. And when I tell you guys, and I'm not meaning to put you off now, so if you put off by anything, turn off for the next five seconds. I was ill from every angle. Like, the exorcist down of nothing on me that night. And I, I just, I can't. I went there, so I was like, Mum, I feel like I'm dying here. She's like, you'll be fine, just rest. Within a matter of hours, he went over the road and got McDonald's. I am not kidding you now. Biggest mistake I made that night was getting that McDonald's. Like, <laughs> he was like, oh, I'm starving, I am. Yeah, I stuffed my face with food because I hadn't eaten since like the afternoon. I was unwell, so I was like, oh, I feel really bad I'm eating this whilst you're unwell. But... I didn't want to know it, I was fine. But then everyone was like, oh, you'll be fine. And then it was like one by one dropping yeah. like flies. I, like, <laughs> I ate the McDonald's and I woke up like three in the morning. I need the toilet. Feeling a bit unwell, didn't get. I got to the bathroom door, and literally the, the toilet's like two foot away. The sink's about three foot away. I didn't make it to either. And I, like I said, exorcist. I projectile vomited everywhere. He like come out in a stream, all over the back of the toilet. All Do you over know what? Now word of a lie. The only other time I think that happened to me was here, but it, not in this space. You know when we did the spicy noodle challenge? Oh God, you was ill. <laughs> and we've got the spicy times two to do yet. Oh, but... fucking hell. Oh, sorry. But the point of it is, I'm not kidding you, it was that fast. And then my whole family got, the, yeah. everybody got, my mum, my dad, t horrendous. It was not good. Absolutely horrendous. Has there ever been a time, like most people in my life, but my family, you just get bad on holiday. Has there ever been a time, we're nipping off now, when you have been yeah, really, really ill? Like on holiday, can you remember a time when you was like, oh my God, I'm out with my friends somewhere or I'm out, I'm in a public place and I feel like, oh, I'm going to be sick or whatever else. Yeah, I was sick on a bus. I've told you all that story before though. 
it's run down because the boss went forward. And if it hadn't gone forwards, it would have been fine. And the sick was on the floor and then oh moved forward. God. And then the sick rolled down. I'm so sorry the if you're eating this. I'd put this in the description. Not Under. To... Uh, uh, Poor uh, old lady's bag. Yeah, her shopping bags were there. And oh. she was lovely. She said, oh my God, I'm so sorry, son. I was dwelling. She called me. Oh. oh no, get yourself home. I'd have jumped on the seat and I'm been sorry. like, hey, do you need a wipe? It's so bad. Right, I'm take his wife. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I'm be ill, um, anyway, guys, remember to be calm, remember to be nice, comment, share, like, and subscribe. And don't forget to turn on your notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. Check out our Munchies Delight vlog channel. Check out our Instagram. It is on private, so you have to request to follow us. We have got a lot to get through, so you know. Also, check it out the community tab because never again, Lee posts on there. Yeah, we do. So, what day is this going in? This is going out tomorrow. Tomorrow. Oh, out today. Okay. Oh, happy Easter! Woo! Happy Easter! We should do a little thing at the beginning to say Happy Easter. Can't start. We're right now. No, we can't. Anyway, oh see you later, guys. We love you lots. Bye! Bye.